There's so much more that can be said about the relationship between Bonaventure and Aquinas, the similarities and overlap between their philosophy and their understanding. Uh, they lived at the same times and were interacting with one another uh, and in very similar circles, had the same sort of challenges, same sort of opportunities in many different ways, saw the world largely the same way. Uh, and so here's a little bonus lecture, bonus discussion on Bonaventure and Aquinas. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Aquinas and Bonaventure have many similarities. Uh, they were both leading lights of the 13th century. Both were Italians by birth, both central Italians and inland, not maritime Italians. Bonaventure is about 15 miles north of Rome, while Aquinas is about 80 miles south of Rome. Uh, but again, geopolitically, this is very important that they were so similar in this. Both studied at the University of Paris at the same time. Uh, they both will teach at the University of Paris. Both impacted theology and philosophy for the subsequent generations of Catholics. Both, you know, if you want to understand Catholic theology and you don't understand Aquinas or Bonaventure, you're missing out on your understanding of what it is to be Catholic if you were. Both were mendicants. Both were of mendicant religious orders, which means you're begging. Uh, you're not wealthy uh, in any sort of stretch. Now, some were a little more strict than others. This becomes part of the debates within the religious orders during their lifetime and afterwards as well of what, how strict should the mendicancy be of all of this. Uh, and both are also considered mystics uh, by one stretch or another. So very similar sort of arc and trajectory and, and where they were in life. There are even more similarities than this, uh, right? They both died connected with the Council of Lyon as they were both supposed to be participating in it, right? Aquinas died on the way, Bonaventure died uh, once he was there. Uh, today, they both have statues in St. Peter's Square that are parallel to each other uh, at the beginning of the colonnade because they have this sort of importance as they stand over and above. Both view theology as practical and theoretical and speculative. Both were also experts on Augustine. They understood Augustine probably better than many of the other people who lived at this time. You definitely wouldn't have that many who could easily rival it as those in the East didn't care as much uh, and these happen to be the two most illuminative of the two men during their time at the most preeminent university, that of Paris. Now, it really depends on who you are, but there's a number of ways of kind of highlighting the distinctions between Aquinas and Bonaventure. While their lives might have been very similar, uh, we, we're not just going to say, well, one was a Franciscan and one was a Dominican, because that's overly simplistic, or one was in charge of a religious order and one wasn't. Again, overly simplistic. Um, classically, there's three different ways. One is looking at how the forms are brought into being. Uh, the other is the acquisition of virtues and the acquisition of knowledge. Personally, I would also add on specific use of Aristotle and philosophy, as well as the role of theology, that relationship between practical and or theoretical or speculative reason, uh, as well as the use of language. We start to see some other key difference. Concerning the forms, Aquinas argues uh, very forcefully that form begets form in matter, that it imposes that form upon matter, which submits to it that the form or the idea will shape the matter that exists in it. Well, for Bonaventure, the form brings life into this bosom of matter uh, and a potential form, which that matter already contains. So the form finds the right fit as it was and transforms it as opposed to in in imposing its identity in that material world. It, it's a little bit heady and a little bit, you know, maybe nuance of a distinction, but it's a distinction. Uh, next, concerning the virtues, uh, Aquinas says that the virtues are acquired, you acquire these natural virtues from the development of natural habitat. This is very much in line with 
the basic notions of virtue ethics uh, that Aristotle talks about and that we've already addressed. For Bonaventure, uh, this waits for grace to descend upon the virtues to complete them. That we're definitely getting this sort of like, okay, you might be somewhat virtuous, but you need God's grace to really be virtuous. It's not just you doing it, but you need this extra sort of sacramental blessing to really make a virtue a virtue instead of just a good act or an act done by a good person. And so this might separate what becomes, you know, is this act truly good if the intent isn't there or the heart isn't there, but the but you're kind of faking it till you make it sort of thing to kind of go in relation or not. And it's a little bit of that debate between the two. Concerning knowledge, Aquinas says intellect forms uh, intelligibles out of sense impressions and creates the first principles, which in their turn are the instruments by which it builds the entire edifice of knowledge. For Bonaventure, the intellect finds within itself the intelligible, which it has not framed out of sense perceptions, but received from God who is within this interior life. So again, very much similar to the notion of virtues, are they there, or do you get knowledge just from the experience? Uh, Aquinas would tend to say yes, while Bonaventure would add on the, this is done because of its reflection and its image and the apprehension that it ultimately has within God. Uh, and that's how we should see and understand it. Further distinctions, you know, right? Aristotle is, is one of them that we kind of have to give that. Uh, Aquinas reinterprets Aristotle and uses his philosophy to shape his own, while Bonaventure applies Aristotle when necessary, but essentially remains a Neoplatonist. Uh, in many ways, it, it's almost surprising uh, with his affinity towards Dionysius that he wasn't also a student of Albert's, uh, right? Because Albert becomes kind of the expert of Dionysius during this same pe period, but is the teacher of. Aquinas and not that of Bonaventure. Just a you know fun little interesting discussion and distinction there. As far as the role of theology goes, uh, on one side theology is the reflection of faith and the purpose of faith in the person who should live their life in accordance with Christ and God's will. On the other, theology seeks to know God and, and we can see some divisions at this point. For Aquinas, theology entails both. Right, that it is theoretical that we need to know God and practical as it orients our life to God as the aim uh, that life seeks is goods and ultimately the good is God. Right. In other words, doing good helps reveal God as our last end as stated in the Summa, uh, the first part, uh, Article 1, uh, 4. So we need to see God and our soul and our last ends to complete our happiness. For Bonaventure, theology is both. Uh, it affirms that wisdom and embraces both, but not in the directional cast like Aquinas, but unified together. Here Bonaventure states, faith in the intellect in such a way that it provokes affection. For example, the knowledge that Christ died for us does not remain knowledge, but necessarily becomes affection and love. Uh, Proquiem one sent question three, that we need love to encounter God and as thus are united to God. The distinction is, do we need to do good slash approach God because we ought to, even if it's for our own benefit, like Aquinas states, or do we do good slash approach God because we love God and desire to, as Bonaventure states, right? Again, there, it's, some of these distinctions kind of seem small, but as you tease them out, they could be larger. Uh, Aquinas, really the prime position and how he's going to move is notions of logic, uh, very much uh, following Aristotle as an Aristotelian logic. While Bonaventure, uh, often identified a little bit more mystical, although you definitely can't take that away from Aquinas, is the notions of love as the, the sort of foundation. Final division that we can talk about is the use of language. Aquinas is very explicit, to the point, dialectical, and I'll say it dry. Uh, there's many times you're like, okay, I got it, we're slogging through it. For Bonaventure, 
it's heavily laden it's symbolic there's metaphorical language it's poetic which is nice because it's not so dry but sometimes it's a little harder to navigate and understand where you're going from from there we'll notice here with aquinas and bonaventure they're very similar they're, they've got a lot of traits that are in common uh, they're talking about many of the same events uh, the difference is somewhat of approach uh, Aquinas is very Aristotelian uh, Aristotle above all uber allus, like we're gonna follow him this is the way that it goes Bonaventure is, is gonna be a little more flowery he's gonna stick a little bit closer to that sort of platonic thought uh, he's gonna be a little more speculative and happy with being speculative uh, it, it doesn't have to be pure logic driven uh, we're okay with a little bit more uh, emotion wrapped up in this and what's really interesting is at the time that they're doing this in the 13th century the divisions between the two mendicant orders between the dominicans and the franciscans wasn't quite as stark as it is today uh, but these become sort of the tendencies of the orders as they go by the Franciscans end up becoming a little more relaxed, flowery, uh, emotional, while the Dominicans tend to be a little bit more dry and to the point and black and white. Uh, oddly enough, you know, the same color as the habit. All right, it's either one thing or the other. Uh, and we can find some room in between the two. Uh, we can see their realm of philosophy and where we want to go with that. But this becomes the sort of push and aim and scope that we have with these two. So I hope that you enjoyed the last you know dozen or so minutes with this bonus, if you're so inclined, uh, and get to understand that while the philosophy is very, very similar and is taking place at the same time, there are some small divisions which if we focus on and see how this philosophy plays out can grow and be larger and larger.